One of the most expensive things about travel is trying to find a place to stay. And if you're traveling on a budget, staying in hotels every night just isn't sustainable. A huge part of the reason I'm able to travel so much is I probably spend one-tenth as much on travel as the average tourist. And not only are hotels expensive, but they're just straight up boring. So in this video, I'm gonna break down some of the best ways to find budget accommodation and tell you guys about 10 alternatives to hotels that'll help you save money and experience more. All right, to kick us off, my number one alternative to staying at hotels is staying at hostels. I am a hostel enthusiast. I've stayed in well over a hundred hostels at this point, and I'm not even exaggerating when I say I could literally be a billionaire and I would still stay at hostels because I just think they are so much fun. For those who don't know, hostels are essentially big dorm rooms where travelers can save big by sharing a living space with strangers. They usually have six to 12 bunks per room, lockers for your stuff, shared bathrooms, a shared kitchen, and lots of common areas to hang out and spend time with fellow travelers. Hostels are usually five to ten dollars a night in places like Southeast Asia, Asia and Central America, and $20 to $30 a night in places like Europe or Australia. Not to mention, hostels usually include a simple breakfast with your stay, which helps save even more. But the price isn't even the reason I love hostels so much. It's the people. I mean, every single person you meet at a hostel is a fellow traveler who likely shares the same sense of adventure and zest for life that you do. You meet all kinds of different people from different countries, with different backgrounds, with different stories to be told. I've met some of my best friends from around the world at hostels, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if I meet the girl I ended up marrying at a hostel. I th The people at hostels are just top notch. Great place to mingle with other adventurous souls. Also, hostels usually organize all kinds of activities and are a great place to find out what things there are to do in a new place. Hostels kind of feel like a mini summer camp for adventurous adults. If you're introverted, this probably sounds like a nightmare, but if you're an extreme extrovert like myself, it's a great way to save on accommodation while also making a bunch of new friends and having an amazing time. My second tip for saving on accommodation while traveling is take night trains. Okay, obviously this isn't something you can do every single night, but I wanted to put it as number two because it's one of my favorite little travel hacks. Whenever I'm on a trip and need to take a long ride to a new place, I'll go out of my way to find a night train or night bus to that destination because then my transport and accommodation costs are combined, which makes everything cheaper. And the added bonus of doing this is then you aren't spending a precious day of travel sitting on a bus so you can maximize daylight and get the most out of a trip. There's quite a few night trains and night buses specifically made to sleep in even though they are a little bit more expensive but personally I'm the type of person who can just sleep anywhere in any position so I'll just take any old night bus and sleep on that. A couple weeks ago I posted an Instagram story where I told people about this trick and I got a lot of responses like my back could never and enjoy it while you're young bucko and I get it this trick isn't for everyone but I love me a good snooze on a bus and if you can handle it you should definitely look into it. If you're in Europe you can actually see a full list of sleeper trains on Eurail.com. Little look Croy break. Dude limoncello slaps. My number three alternative to hotels is couch surfing. All right, this one is kind of polarizing and I feel like people either have an amazing time with it or the worst experience of their life, but I've personally experienced nothing but good with couch surfing, so I thought I'd share. Essentially, couch surfing is like a hospitality exchange where people can offer to host travelers passing through at their house for a night or two totally for free. I know, it doesn't sound like it makes a lot of sense. Why would someone want to host people for free? Capitalism has left the chat, but there's a surprising number of people in the world who genuinely just enjoy interacting with travelers, showing them their hometown, and connecting with like-minded people. I found that most couchsurfing hosts are fellow world travelers who know how nice it is to be hosted by a local and find joy in helping others. And I know this sounds like it's about to be the start of a Mr. Ballin video, but couchsurfing puts a big emphasis on safety, and as long as you use common sense, it's likely to be totally safe. The big thing I'd say is make sure to read a host's profile carefully to make sure they pass a vibe check, and read through their reviews to make sure they're all positive. And as a traveler, it also helps a ton to work up a good reputation with good reviews. Also, as far as safety goes, I just want to acknowledge that as a six foot three male dude, I am extremely fortunate to have to worry a lot less about my safety while traveling. And I recognize that if you're a solo female traveler, you're, you're just going to have to worry a lot more about your safety. I wish the world wasn't like that, but it is. I just don't want to come across as ignorant of that. So take everything I say with a grain of salt. I am not a pretty girl. I am an ugly beast of a man, actually. Anyways, I haven't used couch surfing in years, but I used it when I was like 18 to do this road trip to Oregon, and I had a great time the entire way. Oh, and Warm Showers is a similar website you could check out too. Number four on my list is splitting an Airbnb with friends. I absolutely love Airbnbs. I think they are better than hotels in every way, but unfortunately, a lot of the times they end up being more expensive than hotels. 
in every way. But you go on a trip with a handful of friends and split an Airbnb, and bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a cheap accommodation, pal. Let's say you and four friends wanted to go on a trip to Brazil to, I don't know, high five the Jesus statue or something. You can rent out this here epic beach house for $160 a night, which split between five people is $32 a night. That would be so much fun. At number five on the list, we have a volunteer or work exchange. You don't always have to exchange your money for accommodation. You could also exchange your time and labor. There are more ways than ever before in which you can volunteer your time for a place to stay in a foreign country. And if you want to truly experience a new place on a budget, this might be the best way to do so. If you want to do this, my personal recommendation is volunteer at a hostel. Out of all the volunteer opportunities I've heard about, working at a hostel just seems to be the best balance of work, meeting cool people, and still having time to have fun in a foreign country. There's plenty of other volunteer opportunities though, like teaching English in a foreign country or working on a construction project. And a couple great sites to look for this kind of work is Workaway and World Packers. Another site you may have heard of is Woofing, which stands for Worldwide Work, wait, Worldwide wor <laughs> Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. There you go. And woofing exclusively offers farm work. I've heard stories of people who have had amazing times woofing. I've also heard about people who got in a farm that was just way too intense and it was so much work they didn't even have time to enjoy the place. So anyways, if you like getting your hands dirty and want to travel, woofing is something to consider. At number six on the list, we have renting a camper van. If you're already renting a vehicle for a trip, you might as well combine your vehicle expenses with accommodation and rent something you can sleep in. Some of my favorite trips are ones where I have my vehicle. I mean, having your own vehicle just adds so much freedom to a trip and takes away all the stress of trying to coordinate trains and buses. If you can afford it, renting a camper van is probably the best way to get both a car to drive and a place to sleep at a very reasonable price. There's all kinds of new camper van companies popping up and also RV share websites are becoming more and more popular. A couple good ones are RVshare.com and Outdoorsy.com. Not to mention, camper vans and RVs are usually suitable for a group of people, so just like with the RVs, get a group of friends together and your costs are gonna go way down. But honestly, you don't even need a camper van to have an amazing road trip sleeping in your vehicle. Even if you just rent a normal car, you can usually put the seats down and make a nice little place to sleep in the back and buy a sleeping bag or blankets for it. I did a road trip around Alaska in a Subaru doing this and it was so much fun. Number seven is house sitting. Okay, this one's a little more of a commitment and takes some planning, but if you wanna spend some time in a new place and are willing to have a level of responsibility while doing so, it's a great option. There's people all over the world who need house sitters to take care of their dogs, cats, plants, llamas. And if you can come across as trustworthy and build up a good reputation over time, you'll have unlimited opportunities to have free stays at strangers' houses. There's quite a few sites where you can make a profile and apply for house sitting jobs. The most popular one I know of is Trusted House Sitters, but plenty of others exist like Mind My House and Nomador. These sites usually charge an annual fee to apply for unlimited house sitting gigs. Like Trusted House Sitters charges $130, but if it's something you know you'd use, the fee becomes a very worthwhile investment. The big thing here is it can just take a while to build up a reputation because obviously people don't want to trust random strangers with their houses and pets when they have no reviews. It might take accepting a few jobs in less desirable areas where fewer people are applying for these gigs to build up a reputation, but once you do, you'll have more power to apply for house sits in more desirable areas that you might want to go visit. If you're doing this, just make sure you do a good job and opportunity will follow. At number eight on my list, we have home exchange. Okay, I'm guessing most of the homeowners clicked off this video the moment I started talking about hostel and couch surfing. But if you own a home, this is something I recently learned about that could be a great way to experience a new destination. There's sites like homeexchange.com and homelink.org where homeowners can swap houses and basically live in each other's towns for a bit. You can swap directly with another homeowner or swap indirectly using their system of guest points. I think this is a super cool concept, especially if you're a family with kids that needs a similar accommodation to your own. I'm obviously not really in the position to do this right now. I mean, <laughs> unless there's a tiny home exchange. But someday I'd love to have a family of my own and I think this could be a really cool experience. And home exchange is $175 a year, but I'm guessing if you own a home, that's not much of an issue. At number nine, we have monastery stays. Yeah, this one sounds kind of obscure and it's obviously not a very common form of accommodation while traveling, but it turns out there's actually a surprising number of Catholic monasteries that offer stays to travelers. You'll almost exclusively find these in Italy and surrounding Southern European countries where Roman Catholicism 
Buddhism is strong, but I've also heard of similar setups with Buddhists in places like Thailand. These stays exist primarily because it's seen as Christ-like to be hospitable to travelers passing through, and it's a great way for them to share the gospel. On that note, you don't have to be Catholic or even religious for that matter to stay at a monastery stay, but you are going to have to abide by stricter rules than you normally would, and I think it's just a good idea to be respectful of other people's beliefs regardless. The best site for finding these stays is monasterystays.com, and these are usually going to cost around $30 to $50, although some operate on a donation basis. And to me, I think one of the coolest aspects of a monastery stay is getting to experience the culture of Italy from a different perspective than you otherwise would. I mean, that's just such a sick experience you're going to go home talking about. I've personally stayed in one monastery stay throughout all of my travels. It was in northern Italy, and it was actually pretty sick. There were like nuns walking around in the hallways. It felt like I was in the sound of music or something. Anyways, monastery stays are definitely something to consider on your next trip to Italy. And the very last point I want to talk about is making friends around the world. Okay, this one's more just general life advice than a hotel alternative, but in a weird roundabout way, it kind of is a life hack for getting free accommodation all over the world. Being an extrovert who's traveled to 43 countries, I've come in contact with countless cool people from all over the world, and as a result, have made friends with people all over the world who I still keep in contact with. And the great thing now is just about anywhere in the world I want to go, I have friends who invite me to stay with them there. Now, I never want to be a leech or take advantage of people's hospitality, so I'll never directly ask if I can stay with someone, but all the time I'll just tell someone I'm in their town and ask if they want to meet up and chat and grab a coffee and more often than not they'll be like oh dude you should come stay at my place just by being a kind person and being quick to make new friends your network will naturally increase and you'll find people all over the world who happily want to host you and on that note i think it's important for you as a traveler to also be hospitable to fellow travelers anyways that's how to find budget accommodation while traveling and one more thing i was wearing shorts this entire time and you thought i was dressed up <laughs> stupid head all right bye bye